as we're getting into this first module on EIGRP in this video series, we want to start off by reviewing some of the fundamentals. So some of the fundamentals that we covered back in your CCNA studies. Let's make sure we're solid on those concepts before we dig any deeper. So just a quick review of some of the basics of EIGRP. One of the reasons we love EIGRP so much is that it has very fast convergence. In other words, if we have more than one path from our router to a destination network somewhere and the primary path that we're using fails, we can very quickly converge and start using a backup route if we have a backup route available. Something else that we love about EIGRP is that it is very scalable. And I know that personally because I used to be a network designer down at Walt Disney World in Florida, which was the largest single site employer in the US. We had a very large network, over 500 routers, and that includes multi-layer switches, but we had over 500 routers, each of which were running EIGRP. So EIGRP is definitely very scalable. And something that EIGRP can do that OSPF cannot do is to load balance across unequal cost paths. If I have more than one path to get to a destination network, EIGRP by default is going to select the best path, the path with the lowest metric. However, using the variance option, as we're going to be talking about later in this video course, we could load balance across different paths even though they have different metrics. And something else just to know about EIGRP, and this is no surprise, it does support VLSM. It supports variable length subnet masks, so we don't have to advertise a network at its classful boundary. We can advertise information about the subnet. And when we're advertising information, we're going to be using with EIGRP a multicast destination address of 224.0.0.10. I want you to know that EIGRP uses this multicast address, and when we get into our OSPF discussions later on, we're going to see that it uses a couple of different multicast addresses. And one of the biggest things that has changed about EIGRP is that even though it used to be a Cisco proprietary routing protocol, Cisco has now opened it up where third-party vendors can run EIGRP on their equipment. So now you don't have to have a Cisco-only network like we had down at Walt Disney World in Florida when I worked there several years ago. We can now have a mixed vendor environment if we find other vendors that also support EIGRP. 